Today we're diving into Prime Tween, a lightweight, zero allocation tweening library for Unity that feels fast, predictable, and incredibly easy to use. We'll start by building animations with sequences, shakes, and callbacks, and then move into controlling tweens using custom easing curves and even writing our own allocation-free custom tweens. Then we'll dive into some async workflows and object pooling, create some game-ready, reusable animations, all running smoothly on Unity's main thread. Let's get into it. So first things first, Prime Tween is free. And as of early last year, it's also available as a package on the Asset Store. But if you head over to the GitHub repository, that's where you'll find all the documentation and discussions related to this package. Links to both of those things in the description. All right, let's start with a simple model behavior we'll call Prime Tween Demo. I'm going to add this script to a simple cube and we'll cache the renderer. And then most of my tweens will run at a one second duration. Next, let's declare two prime tween handles, one for a single tween and one for a more complex sequence. Both tween and sequence are structs, not classes, which means they're allocation free and lightweight. It's not strictly necessary to store these references, but it's useful if you want to manage them after they've started running. So let's have a start method where we create our first tween. We'll create a tween that just moves this transform's local Y position from its current value to 3F over two seconds using a smooth ease in out curve. Now, Prime Tween, for the most part, is allocation free. And last week, we created a helpful utility called Alloc Counter. I'll add a link to last week's video in the description. But basically, we we're just going to count all the allocations between the creation of our Alloc Counter and the point where we call stop. And then we can just log out the number of allocations that were made out to the console. So let's run this basic test in Unity. The cube already has a Y position of 2, so we should see it ease up to 3. And if you take a look in the console, you can see zero allocations. So let's come back to code and create a sequence, which will let us combine and chain multiple tweens together. I'm going to set it to repeat two times with a yo-yo cycle mode. This will give us a nice back and forth looping effect. Next, I'm going to add two group calls. Now, group calls run in parallel. So this first one will move the cube horizontally, and the second one will scale it up slightly. But notice I've added a param for start delay. So even though they run in parallel, the second one will start half a second after the first. Just for now, I'll comment out that first tween. Let's go back to Unity. We'll see the horizontal movement and then the scaling. The yo-yo setting plays it all in reverse. Once again, we can see zero allocations. Now let's add a little bit more complexity. I'm gonna restore the original tween and then I'll add a comment just above our groups in the sequence to note that these groups run in parallel because next we're gonna start using the chain method which allows us to extend the sequence with more groups or just individual tweens. So after those grouped tweens finish, we chain a rotation, and then I'll add another helpful method so that we can just add a one second delay. Now, another useful chain method we can use is to chain a callback. So after the one second delay, let's log something out to the console saying that we've completed one cycle. Now, technically yo-yo mode eats up two cycles to go forward and back. So let's increase the cycles to four, and actually let's change the cycle mode to something different. There's a few different built-in options here. Let's choose restart. Okay, let's go try this out. We shouldn't have any surprises here. We've just chained on a few effects at the end for the rotation, a little pause, and we see our callback showing up in the console. And just like before, we still see zero allocations. After four restarts, we're all finished. Now we're gonna look at a few things that are a little bit more advanced. And the first one is the insert method. We're going to insert a custom tween at a specific time in the sequence. So if I add a call to the insert method, first of all, we can specify how far into the tween we want to do it. So let's say half a second. And next, I'm going to use tween custom because with prime tween, you can tween just about anything you can imagine. So let's animate the cube's material color from its current value over to red over a period of two seconds. The last lambda applies the interpolated value each frame. Now, some of you may have noticed that I'm making some allocations here. In fact, there are two of them. Take a moment and think about it. Which parts of this custom tween allocate memory? Well, while you think about that, let's jump into Unity and show that that's true. Now, we should see that custom color tween starting half a second into each cycle. And if you look down into the console, you can see there we've got those two allocations. So removing the two allocations is really easy. Let's jump back into code. If we take a look at our lambda method here, it was implicitly capturing this. 
the surrounding mono behavior instance, and the cube renderer reference from the outer scope, which is forcing the C-sharp compiler to allocate a hidden closure object on the heap every time the tween is created. The other issue is that Unity's render.material property clones the shared material on demand, which of course is allocating enough memory for a new copy of that material. Let's fix the issue with the Lambda first. Most of the tween methods in PrimeTween allow you to pass in a reference to this, using a parameter named target. This means that instead of just passing val into our Lambda, I'm going to pass a tuple that consists of target and val. Now I don't have to reference the cube renderer directly. Instead, we can access it through target. A very useful technique to learn if you're trying to avoid closures in your own custom code. Next, to solve the issue with the material, let's just create a new member to hold that reference. At the top of our start method, we can cache that reference one time. Let's replace the calls to cube renderer.material to instead reference the material that we've already cloned and cached. Let's go have a sanity check. Now, the behavior shouldn't have changed at all, but we should see in the console zero allocations, which we do. Perfect. Let's move on to how do we control tweens once they've started running. I've collapsed up the start method. We're not going to make any more changes there for now. Instead, in our update method, both tweens and sequences have a property called isAlive. This tells us whether the sequence is currently active and still being updated by Prime Tween's internal manager. We can log out the progress percentage to LogWin and check it out next time we're in Unity. Next, let's add some keyboard shortcuts to control the animation in real time. Pressing S will call sequence.stop which is equivalent to the do tweens kill method where you pass in a false. So it halts the animation instantly and skips any completion callbacks. Pressing C will run sequence.complete, which is like calling do tweens kill method but passing in true. So it immediately jumps to the end and also fires any on complete events. Finally, pressing P will toggle the pause state by flipping the is paused property. Now, there's no point in using any of these methods if the sequence is not alive, so let's just return early if that's the case. Furthermore, none of these commands are going to work at all if we don't cache those references to the sequence. So let's open up the start method again. Here, I'll just make sure to assign our tween into the tween handle and do the same for the sequence. Also, we don't have an oncomplete hook in our sequence yet, so let's add one here somewhere inside of the sequence to output something to the console. Okay, let's try it out. Let's try a pause first and keep an eye on LogWin beside my regular console. Let it finish one cycle, and then I'll hit P. There we go. And again. And again. Now, this time I'll actually stop it. Notice that the custom color tween, the motion tweens, everything has just stopped in place, but no on complete event was fired. Essentially, we just killed it. Now let's go back into play mode, and this time I'll let it run once, and then I'll try to complete it. Okay, so I hit complete while it was in the one second delay at the end. You can see it immediately output cycle completed and also fired the on complete hook. All right, I've cleaned out our prime tween demo class because we're going to look at some quality of life settings now. The first one is that you can expose some tween settings to the inspector. This is a generic struct where your type T can be float, vector three, and so on. Then we have another type of settings that's specific for shakes. It has its own kind of property drawer. And just for interest's sake, I'm also going to expose a Boolean to reverse the direction of a tween in an animation curve to show how those can be used as well. So inside of start, let's start with a position tween using our serialized tween settings. Looks a lot cleaner than our previous calls, doesn't it? Now on the settings themselves, we can call with direction and I can pass in that invert property. This is a neat little helper. So if an invert is true, it will reverse the direction of the tween automatically. Next, PrimeTween has several shake methods, such as shake local position. Notice that there's a lot of arguments you can pass in, but a lot easier than that would be just to pass in some shake settings. Next, let's make a tween that uses our animation curve. So in any tweening method where you would normally pass in an easing style, there's also an overload so that you can pass in a custom curve instead. So even though all the normal easing functions are there, you can definitely specify your own. Now, one more very useful tween and camera specific is shake camera. Here, you can just pass in the camera and a strength factor. It has some other arguments you could pass in as well, but you can keep it really simple if you just need to give the camera a little bump. So, for example, you could be much more explicit and you could give it the strength factor, duration, and frequency. And in fact, it has more params than that. Let's go into Unity and see what this looks like. 
First of all, let's take a look at our tween settings that I named Y position tween. So this really exposes all the different possible parameters you could ever pass in. You can choose your own easing function or you can select custom if you want, which would let you set a curve right there in the inspector. You can set the cycles, the start delay and so on. You can also be explicit about your update type. So if you wanted to use fixed update or late update, you could. Let's open up shake settings. You can see it looks a little bit different because we've got a vector three we can set here for the shake. And then of course it has all the other settings you might expect like duration, frequency, if you wanna have a fall off. You can set the easing type, which works the same as the tween settings, but there's a separate ease for fall off and for between shakes. I exposed a Boolean earlier. I'm just gonna tick that on for inverting the direction. And for the custom curve, let's just pick an interesting animation curve to put in there. Good to go. Let's hit play and try it out. So that's an interesting mix. Camera shake, object shake, and moving around a little bit. I'll just play it one more time. And actually what might be interesting at this point is if I stop and I hit pause and we come back into play mode again, this will give us a chance to look at the Prime Tween Manager itself, which you can find under the Don't Destroy on Load section of your hierarchy. Then if you look over in the inspector, you'll see the debugger. This debugger shows all the stats of all the tweens and sequences that are currently playing in your game. You can expand and collapse different sections, and it'll show you the real-time values of all of the tweens as they're playing. So I realize that's a lot of data, but if I come back up to the top and I start stepping through my game, you should see some of those numbers start to change as the positions change, as the shakes go off, and so on. In this top section here, it's showing everything in update, but if you scroll down, you see the late update and fixed update sections as well. Okay, let's go back to Unity, and for the end of the video, let's do something a little bit more practical and a little bit more advanced. We built spawners on this channel before, but this time we're gonna use an async workflow to control how entities animate and return to the pool. One of the few limitations of PrimeTween is that it doesn't natively support cancellation tokens. This means we can't just pass in a token into an await call and cancel tweens automatically when something despawns. Instead, we'll handle cancellation manually using the tween and sequence handles themselves, calling stop or complete when needed. Let's start by setting up a few class members. We'll keep a reference to the pool that owns this entity, plus two fields, one for a single tween and one for a sequence. This way we can manage separate animations and interrupt them cleanly when the object gets released. To keep a reference to the pool, let's have a public method here initialize where we pass in the reference and set it. Now, the next examples are gonna use unitask, but of course you can use a regular task if you like. We can have a method, play spawn animation async, that'll handle how the entity appears in the scene. We can start by setting the scale to zero and then run a quick scale up tween with an outback easing to give it a bouncy pop effect. In parallel, we can group another tween that lifts it slightly upwards on the Y axis. Using the group method like this returns a sequence. So we're gonna store that in anim and then we're going to await the animation. Next, move away async will make the entity drift away from the spawn point. So let's calculate a random direction on the XZ plane normalize it, then we can multiply that by the distance to find the target position. Then we can tween the entity's position towards that point. Inside the on update callback, we can rotate its transform a little bit each frame. Using the callback like this is similar to what we did above with the group method, but here we're just executing some code every frame instead of another tween in parallel. Let's make one more async method for playing death animation async. This one will be quite simple. Let's just scale down to zero and drop slightly to give it that sucked back effect. When this animation completes, we want to trigger our return to pool method. And even though we don't return to the pool until the tween is over, we should still make sure that the tween is actually stopped. So anytime we want to return to the pool or just anytime we want to cancel one of these async operations, we should also call this interrupt method. And you could expand on this to handle all the sequences and tweens being executed by this class. So when we return an object to the pool, we can just call the interrupt method for safety's sake, and then we call the release method on the pool. So the key takeaway here is if you have to cancel an async method, make sure that you call that interrupt method and cancel any running tweens manually. Now that we have our entity fully animated and pool aware, let's build the actual spawner that manages it. Let's keep a serialized reference to the entity prefab we'll be spawning and an internal object pool to manage the instances. Inside of awake, we can initialize the pool. As per usual, we're gonna pass in four callbacks to define the life cycle inside the pool. Create entity will be the fool's factory method. We can instantiate a new entity under the spawners transform and immediately initialize it with a reference to this pool. 
On get runs whenever we retrieve an entity from the pool. On release will be similar, but this time we want to make sure that we call that interrupt method before deactivating the game object. Finally, the on destroy entity will be called whenever the pool itself is cleared or exceeds its max size. We can stop any active tweens one last time and safely destroy the game object. Finally, let's make a public method so that we can asynchronously spawn one of these entities. We can pull an instance from the pool, position it, then we can await the spawn animation, followed by a movement animation. Now, it's probably worth mentioning that you could do something like use the when all method if you wanted to run several asynchronous methods at the same time. But prime tween will always run on the main thread, never a background thread. So if you pause the game, for example, even though your background task might complete, the when all itself won't complete because your tween won't have finished. At least not until you unpause the game. Okay, moving on. After a short delay, we can play the death animation, which scales and fades the entity out before returning it to the pool. Let's quickly make one more class that'll spawn our enemies in waves inside the start method here. We can get a reference to the spawner itself. Then maybe we can have just three waves where we just await that spawn entity async method, short delay, continue. And that's really it. Why don't we jump back into Unity, make sure it all works. We'll just jump right into play mode here. We should see cubes starting to spawn and move away from the spawn point. And then after a little delay, they shrink and disappear out of sight. Looks not too bad, working as intended. Though they'd probably look a lot better with a little material or maybe some effects. Or hey, maybe I can even bring in some kind of creature. So anyway, this is where we're going to wrap it up for today. I encourage you to head over to the GitHub README. It's not super long, but it details a few things that I wasn't able to cover today such as tweening timescale and even the global timescale. And then there's also a special tool that'll help you convert from do tween over to prime tween if you're interested in doing something like that. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell because there's a new video every Sunday on some kind of advanced or intermediate Unity topic. Join us on Discord if you feel like it. I'll throw another video up on the screen. Maybe I'll see you there.